One day, a client was sitting in my office waiting to be admitted to the hospital. He was hearing voices and focused on what they were saying, yet he couldn't help look around my office with curiosity. Why do you have superheroes on your walls, he asked. I told him I like how many superheroes are wounded and how they find their strength through embracing their suffering. He looked around again. Suffering, huh? Do any of them hear voices? Why, yes, Professor X, leader of the X-Men, hears voices. How can he be the leader if he hears voices? Now, I had to admit, that was a pretty good question. Well, because those voices are the cries of the mutants, and Professor X needs to hear them in order to save them. At this, he lowered his head and whispered, I can't save anyone. Well, I advised him, maybe just for today, you can start by saving yourself. And he smiled. This is just one example of how comic book heroes can guide and inspire us. Because at their very core, comic books, as a form of modern mythology, reflect back the human experience. With themes like good versus evil, self-sacrifice versus domination, and conformity versus dissent, they teach us a lot about suffering. Wolverine helped me when I was suffering. He helped me to release my anger, and in doing so, brought me a sense of peace. No one was more surprised about that than me. Because unlike most comic book fans that learned to love superheroes as children, my personal fascination with Wolverine didn't begin until a few years ago, when I was sexually assaulted. You know, a lot of people assume that we psychologists have it all together, that just because we understand human behavior, we're somehow immune to trauma, that we don't feel the same emotional hits as everyone else. I'm here to tell you, nothing could be further from the truth. There was no special pass for me. There was no clinician heal thyself, or this too shall pass. Because for those of you who know, trauma is downright brutal. The depression subdues you, the anxiety corners you, and the fear restricts your every movement. And if living with all of that wasn't enough, I also had to deal with defamation of character and judgment by those who like to turn the blame back on the victim, namely me. But the worst part? was feeling emotionally numb, and the fact that I'd lost myself. Before the assault, I was strong and opinionated and, and loud. But after the assault, I didn't know who I was. I'd stare at the mirror and wonder, where did I go? I felt lost, hopeless defeated. Then I stumbled across this image of Wolverine. He looked like I felt, alone in a sewer, covered in filth, beaten in battle. That was me. I was there. I remember staring at that image for a long time. It was his sneer that got me because Wolverine knew he was going to get the bad guys who put him there. There was no way he was going to sit there and take it. No way. I mean, just look at him. With his trademark adamantium claws protruding from his fist, he said in the panel, OK, suckers, you've taken your best shot. Now it's my turn. And then rising up from the sores, he sliced and he diced and he went all Mount St. Helens on his enemies. <laughs> it was Wolverine's darkness, his bellicosity, his badassery, if you will, that drew me in. Now, most people would probably go with Superman as their quintessential superhero. But I didn't need Superman 
Superman would just scoop up the bad guy and take him to the police because that's the right thing to do. No. Based on the way that I felt, Superman was too perfect. I wanted someone raw, someone damaged. I wanted this guy. Because to be honest with you, he looked like he could seriously mess someone up. I wanted to know Wolverine, where he came from, his strengths and weaknesses, the weapon he was created to be, and the wild card warrior he became. That's when I devoured as much information as I could about him. Among other things, I discovered he is a mutant, different, an outcast. He's endured more pain and suffering than almost any other superhero. That's why when someone tries to control or cage him, look out. He gets angry, enraged, untamed. Like a wild animal, he will defend himself with ferocity, and he never backs down. Never. And somewhere deep within me, that's who I wanted to be. I wanted to fight back. I wanted to defend myself. It was Wolverine's anger that gave me the strength to say, enough. Enough self-loathing and hiding in corners. Enough giving away my power to someone that didn't deserve it. He gave me back my grit. And I started to get pissed. Really pissed. Mutant pissed at all of it. The violation, the injustice, and the betrayal. And as my anger grew, I felt my blood boil. I saw red. I felt almost dangerous. It got to the point I couldn't hold back anymore. And after months and months of suffering, when I was finally able to release all of my rage, it was not pretty. I cried hysterically. My hands shook violently. And I screamed at the very top of my lungs. But when it was all over, something amazing happened. I felt incredible. In that moment, the depression, anxiety, fear, gone. I had no idea I could ever feel like myself again. But there I was, and there it was. Strength. Suddenly, I had perfect clarity. Like Wolverine, there was no way I was going to take it anymore. No. Hell no. I was going to fight back, if for nothing else to proclaim my truth. This is not my shame to carry, and I will not be silenced. Wolverine. He gave me and my fight back to myself. So, <laughs> who exactly is this hero of mine? Comic book legends Roy Thomas, Len Wein, John Romita Sr., and Herb Trempe created Wolverine, also known as Logan, to be a strong and feisty mutant with razor-sharp claws. Just look at those bad boys. <laughs> Logan's a war veteran, wears dog tags, rides a motorcycle, drinks hard liquor, and enjoys the company of many, many women. <laughs> How's that for a Match.com profile? <laughs> he is a natural-born predator. He heals from almost any injury, making him both violent and indestructible. And when he's done with whatever carnage he's inflicted, upon those who clearly deserved it. He simply finds a bar, has a drink, and lights a cigar, dismissing the whole thing. 
Make no mistake, Wolverine is not your typical superhero. He is an anti-hero who plays by his own rules and acts within his own moral code. He also has a near-perfect body. <laughs> Let's all take a moment to thank you, Jackman, for playing Wolverine on the big screen. Right? His performance was absolutely incredible, and we are very grateful. But Logan's dualistic in nature. Beneath that tough exterior, he's also kind, witty, compassionate. He defends the innocent against the bad guys, and he's a loyal member of the X-Men. Now, the X-Men are crime-fighting mutants created during the civil rights era to represent the struggles of minorities in America. As a member of the X-Men, Wolverine essentially is a minority who fights oppression. You see, in the Marvel world, humans fear mutants. They see them as dangerous freaks of nature and so target them for prejudice and persecution. And yet the X-Men try to rise above it. They protect the humans, try to work with them in the hopes that one day they will also be seen as equal members of society. Logan fits right in. Mm, sort of. While most of the X-Men are logical, he is not. He is the muscle of the group, the enforcer, but just like other mutants, he's unwanted and so struggles to find his place in an unjust world. And so it appears the X-Men tales of societal oppression continue to be relevant to this day. Think about it. Every day, minorities have to deal with hate messages or some new law or policy designed to suppress them. Whether you've been detained at an airport because of your religion, banned from using certain bathrooms because of your identity, wrongfully beaten or arrested by police because of your skin color, or have been dehumanized by being called a rapist, a murderer, or an alien, you know oppression on a very personal level. You are victimized and then blamed for your victimization. And even if you're not a minority, almost anyone can understand the outrage that comes from mistreatment. How many of you have been harassed at work? Body shamed by your partner. Emotionally abused by your parents. Patronized because of your age, gender, or disability. Teased because of your religious beliefs. Judged for how you look or who you are. Wolverine and the X-Men remind us of the most important things to fight for in this life. Respect, inclusion and equality. So what can we learn from Wolverine? Quite a lot, actually. First, his erratic nature reveals something within each of us. It calls into question whether or not we should act upon our anger or continue to submit to injustice. Wolverine teaches us that sometimes in life, things are not okay. We should not be silent, and we most certainly should not be complicit. When we get pushed to our very limits, when we are blatantly disrespected, when we are assaulted like I was, or oppressed because of the color of our skin, our religion, or whom we choose to love, rage is a very appropriate response because anger can lead us to understand what is wrong and what we need to do to change it. Which brings me to the second thing we can learn from Wolverine. We can't hold on to rage forever. Wolverine traveled the world to learn control. He became a samurai warrior and with the help of his mentors learned to tame the animal within. Like Wolverine, we can't go around slicing and dicing everyone who makes us angry, even though at times we may secretly like to do so. We must choose our battles wisely, but when we do find a cause worth fighting for, we must find our voice and make it loud and redirect our rage to one of positive action. And then, we must release our anger. Third, like Wolverine, we can be heroes in our own right. We have within each of us the ability to stand up for ourselves and to defend others. In a prejudiced and unjust world, Wolverine, at the very minimum, reminds us that we need courage to assert ourselves in the battle for justice and equality. And it is in the acceptance of that fight that we discover what we're really made of and who we are. Lastly, 
While Wolverine represents this struggle and our suffering, he also represents our healing, resiliency, and growth. He teaches us that it's possible for us to be good while also embracing our pain, our truth, and our own badassery. As it turns out, I didn't need Wolverine to save me. I was going to save myself. I didn't need him to be real either. But he inspired me, reminded me, I am still a fighter. And so are you. I embrace my inner Wolverine by accepting my own suffering with the intent of moving through it, regardless of the end result. And in that process, like Wolverine, I became what I can accept to be the very best version of myself. I wish the same for you. May you embrace your inner Wolverine and become your own superhero. Thank you. <laughs>